these are people who are coming back home after 2,600 years of being exiled, and these people are living their tradition daily, and they disconnected themselves from the present reality into a new reality here in Israel, and uh, a lot of expectations, a lot of anxiety, a lot of hopes. It is a miracle and a continuous one. Uh, I think that the saddest and the happiest day in the life of an individual like myself who is the chairman of this operation is uh, closing down an ancient uh, community, which is a sad event, and opening again the same community here in Israel. So it goes together. I came to Israel. I'm going to start. We are going to start new life here. We are very happy to come to our country. Well, I feel excellent too. I feel really great. I hope to start really new life. To study. To study in university and all. Now, after 70, 80, 90 years. People are coming out of the closet, so out of the regime, or out of the Soviet bloc, and coming back. And you know, it's unbelievable what people are attracted for. You know, in the last couple of decades, last couple of years, there are 40,000 places kept reserved for Jewish refugees from former Soviet Union to go to the United States of America. I mean, the United States of America is a golden, it's a golden state, right? I mean, it's a beautiful place. This year, less than 25,000 use these places and all the rest of them came to Israel. Because Israel is a real alternative, not just economic one, not just personal one, spiritual one and national one as well. This is very exhilarating to me to be here because this is a unique place. And not because uh, part of my family was involved in it, but uh, from a national point of view, here, the leadership of the community of Israel, the Yishuv, took the tremendous step and the tremendous risks of declaring the foundation of the Jewish state. My father was the chairman of the Jewish agency and the uh, rest of the leadership of the, of the Jewish Yishuv were here with all the dignitaries, all those that carry the responsibility. And after great debates because of the risk involved, and in spite of the request of the United States to postpone the declaration for three months and have a ceasefire, Ben-Gurion insisted and managed to persuade some of his hesitating friends to declare the creation of the Jewish state on the 14th of May, on Friday afternoon. I can't say that I was shattered by this tremendous event because we were already involved in the war. And uh, the war actually started on the 30th of November, 47, the night after the United Nations decided to partition Palestine into two separate states, the Jewish and the Arab states. On the night of the United Nations decision, that was on the side of Ben-Gurion, we saw all the people dancing in the streets. And he told me, today they dance, tomorrow there will be bloodshed. And that what really happened, as you know, on the morrow of the decision. The war broke out. We knew the truth that we are outgunned and outnumbered. And every day was a day of struggle how to get more arms, more cartridges, more ammunition, how to produce something that will give us an edge, 
of our dear ups. It was a tremendous effort. I was born here in Gush Etzion. My parents come here like settlers in uh, 43. And uh, they believed that this area is part of Eretz Israel. In 48, that was drama. The Arabs want to come to Jerusalem, come to Gush Etzion, and uh, in the battle, one day before Independence uh, Day, the Arabs killed all the settlers of Kfar Etzion. Only few survived. My father was one of them. The Arabs destroyed everything in Gush Etzion, the building, the trees. But uh, this tree remained. So it was for us like a, a mark, a sign that we are returned home. I came to this country with a certificate from the British Mandate as research fellow of the Hebrew University in Jerusalem. And uh, I was happy to be saved. I did not succeed to bring out my mother that in 42, I believe, uh, died in the concentration camp of Theresienstadt. But I was happy that I was saved. And that's a very simple thing. When you are saved and you see that part of the family is killed and goes to the concentration camps, and part of the family is my uncle and a cousin that were the ex deported and we never heard anything about them afterwards. So you are happy that you are saved. And for me, going to Israel was a continuation of my religious Zionist attitude and ideology since I was a pupil in the gymnasium. I grew up in one of the most Zionist political homes in Israel. My father was a member of Knesset and the minister since the day one of the State of Israel. And uh, from my mother's side, who was born in Hebron, a very famous uh, town, and half of her family was, was uh, murdered and slaughtered by the Arabs, and half of the family was rescued by Arabs. So the conflict and the decisions and the processes, they're all part of, my, uh, part of my bringing up process. But I'll say, if you ask me what are the early, uh, early memories I have, I would say that's the tidal waves of immigration during the 50s and the 60s coming mainly from North, uh, uh, North uh, Africa and coming from the Nazi uh, dis displaced Jews, I mean, uh, Nazi uh, regime uh, victims. Oh, 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 oh,